What's up, collectors? Welcome back to Films by Color. Today, I just wanted to do a old school, simple collection update for you guys. I've been doing a lot of different kinds of videos lately, and I realized it's been a long time since I've just done a laid back collection update, letting you know everything I've been picking up in the last couple weeks. So that's what we're gonna do today. I've got a big stack here of about 13 or so films that I picked up last month. So this is everything I picked up in March, 2023. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this stack, but be sure to let me know in the comments if you like this kind of collection update video, and if I should make more of these more often. And as always, hit the subscribe button, like, notification bell, all that good stuff. First up, we've got the brand new 4K Cinderella from Disney, specifically the Disney Movie Club exclusive. I usually decline the monthly offers because they're not usually anything I'm interested in or movies that I already have, but this, was one that I actually accepted because I was very curious to see what Disney would do with a 4K restoration of one of their classic films. I was a little skeptical, honestly, because I thought it was just gonna kind of be a rush job because Disney is not known for their love of physical media these days, but it turns out to be great. It's actually a really good restoration in my eyes, and I think most people agree on this. It looks really, really good. I popped it in the day that it arrived. I haven't watched the whole thing through yet, but I did pop it in and watch several scenes, and I watched some of it with my kids. It looks really good. It looks the best it's ever looked, so I'm very excited to have that in my collection. If you didn't pick that up, uh, maybe join the Disney Movie Club, or I think you can just wait till August. I think they're doing a wide release as well, but yeah. It's got a uh, pretty nice artwork on there. It's just a standard 4K case. Good, it's covering up the digital code. Blu-ray, oh no, I showed it, oh. Let me take that out of there. So you've got your 4K disc, and you've got your Blu-ray, and you've got your DVD. The Blu-ray is actually of the new restoration. It's not the same Blu-ray that we got before. Really like that iridescent slip cover there. Don't love the rounded corners with the cuts here. Not my favorite kind of slip cover. And of course, we still have to have the big, ugly banner across the top. But other than that, it looks really nice on the shelf. And I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with my Cinderella Blu-ray. I'm going to have to donate that or sell it or give it to somebody. I don't know. Next one we have here is another 4K that I picked up at Best Buy recently. This is a blind buy for me. It is the 4K restoration of Ran. This is Akira Kurosawa's adaptation of King Lear. If you've been paying attention to the last couple of videos, I've talked about Shakespeare quite a bit. I was not exposed to Shakespeare growing up. I went to a high school that had a horrible literature program and we didn't read any Shakespeare. We didn't read hardly anything. And uh, I've had to play catch up in my college and later years. But the more I learn about Shakespeare, the more I seem to really dig it. So this, is a Shakespeare adaptation and it's also a samurai film. So sounds like a good time. I didn't even know this was out. I was just browsing my Best Buy and this totally caught my eye on the shelf because it looks gorgeous. Look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up because there's some crazy shine. There we go. Much better, look at that. So it is a steelbook. I'm not usually a steelbook guy, but you put a slip cover on that steelbook, whew. I'm sold. That is the only acceptable steelbook in my eyes is a steelbook with a slipcover. Holy crap, look how nice this looks. Like I said, I haven't even popped this open yet. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I love the red. Love the fire and the wind. There is a digital code in there as well, so I will take that out. But look at the discs. Wow, this is just beautiful all the way around. I can't wait to check this out. Um, if it's anywhere near as beautiful as this steelbook, indicates that it is. I know I'm probably really gonna enjoy it. It describes it on the back as Akira Kurosawa's visually dazzling samurai epic. So apparently the visuals are a very big part of this film and I can't wait to check it out. That is Akira Kurosawa's Ran in 4K. Apologies if I'm not looking at you guys for this video. I'm using a different camera today. I'm actually using my phone on a tripod up here and I'm used to looking at my webcam on my laptop down here. So sorry if I'm looking down and you can see the top of my head. Next up! Another 4K, and I had to really, really hunt for this one. I had to find this one on Amazon because I went to my Best Buy several times and they only had the Blu-ray, they didn't have the 4K, and then my targets around me don't even get 4K, so they only had the Blu-ray as well. So in order to get the 4K, I had to go to Amazon. Here it is, 
Puss in Boots, one of my favorite theater experiences from last year. We took the kids to this one. I think this might have been the first new movie we've taken them to. We've taken them to some older movies like Wizard of Oz, and they saw some Studio Ghibli films in the theater as well. We saw Totoro and Kiki's Delivery Service. But yes, this I think is the first new movie that they saw in the theater, and they loved it. I loved it. This movie is perfect for me. It's playing with all the fairy tale tropes and lore, and it's also another just visually stunning movie, and I can't wait to watch it in 4K downstairs in the theater. Had to have that in the collection. One of my favorite DreamWorks movies now. Really jumped up the list. Very, very cool movie. I love where animation is going these days. I love the natural progression we've got from Spider-Verse to Mitchell's vs. the Machines to now Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, and I can't wait to see where it goes because I think animation is in a really good place that it hasn't been in a long time because Disney and Pixar have kind of done the exact same animation style for years and years, and they don't ever change it, and I'm hoping that this makes them up their game a little bit. Next, speaking of animation that's not Disney or Pixar, we have an animated film all the way back from the 90s that I have never seen, and uh, it's another 4K release. Nothing but 4K releases today, apparently. I just I added a bunch of 4K. I finally took the plunge into 4K. I don't usually, I don't have that many 4Ks back there. But uh, this month, last month in March, I picked up a ton of 4Ks and I didn't even realize that. But here it is, another one. This is the 4K transfer of Prince of Egypt with a stunning slipcover. Very nice. The colors are amazing. You got the purple and the pinks, but there's this like holographic gold foil texture on the text and on the what is that armor jewelry i don't know what you call that on the pharaoh and uh moses there but yeah this is uh this is prince of egypt this is a classic dreamworks movie from the classic era of 2d stuff back when they made rotel dorado which is one of my favorite animated movies and i have heard that this is even better i've heard that this is one of the best animated movies ever definitely one of the best dreamworks animated movies that's just what i've heard i don't i can't say for myself because i haven't seen it yet but i am going to watch it soon i was actually in the mood i almost watched it on easter but i ended up watching the 1950s ben-hur instead but yes prince of egypt cult classic fan favorite a lot of people love this one and i can't wait to check it out next up keep the 4ks coming it is superman superman 4k i know before you yell at me in the comments that there is a box set coming out for this i know that there's a box set coming out for this i probably won't get it i have only seen the first superman and i don't really have any interest in seeing the other ones and I didn't think a box set would be worth it just because it's not something I'm super interested in. So I actually went to eBay and found one of these babies that still had the slipcover because uh, the slipcovers are kind of hard to find. I've seen this like this at Best Buy before and uh, I wanted to go ahead and grab one with the slipcover because this is a classic superhero movie. I mean, if, I, if I'm going to show my kids any superhero movie, I have to show them this one and I wanted it in a nice, beautiful presentation for the shelf. So I went ahead and grabbed Superman the movie. I know this is kind of a controversial 4K transfer. Some people have issues with it. I'm not super into the nitty gritty details of 4K. I just want it to look good. I'm sure this is the best it's ever looked and at least better than the Blu-ray. So, and I didn't have the Blu-ray. I actually didn't own this at all. So it wasn't any different for me. I had to pick up one version and I thought I would just pick up this version. I really like the slipcover, although it's gonna be hard to place on the shelf because it's like half red, half blue with a little yellow and a little black in there. So. Not quite sure where I'll put it yet. I'll probably put it in the red section. Oh, that side's different. Okay. I'll pick a side. I'll put it on the shelf. And uh, very excited to have that. I can't wait to watch this because I've only seen this once in my entire life. I know that is blasphemy, but uh, I did not grow up with DC characters and I didn't grow up with DC movies and I didn't grow up with the Superman movies, unfortunately. But I'm going to remedy that moving forward in the Martinez family because uh, I'm going to show this to my kids as soon as I can. And uh, very excited to have that. Let me know if you've seen this 4k restoration of this and what you think about it next up we have an a24 release this is only my second a24 release following the green knight release that i picked up and did an unboxing review of this is marcel the shell which is one of my wife's favorite movies from last year and uh, i really really enjoyed it too i enjoyed it a lot more than i was expecting to a very surprisingly good movie this was one that i just blind bought because i knew my wife would love it. She was a huge fan of the old Marcel the Shell videos years and years ago, back when she was in high school. And when we first started dating, she showed those videos to me and uh, we watched them together. So I knew she was going to love this movie. It wasn't streaming anywhere. So I just went ahead and bought it from A24 when they released this. And I'm very happy I did because we ended up really liking it. 
and it's such a beautiful release. It's one of their barcode spine releases that they've been doing lately. Uh, so it doesn't match the Green Knight, but it does match uh, some of their other ones like Lamb and also After Sun, which just came out, which I don't know if I'm gonna pick up yet, but uh, it does match the spine of this one, so I'm tempted. It has a very nice, simple, classy looking back with the uh, spot gloss on the image there and also spot gloss on his blow pop wrapper parachute on the front, which is very cool. It slides out as a digipack, comes out from the side, lovely green color, carries on to the inside of the box. And then you've got, oh, just a beautiful, beautiful digipack with some lovely imagery on the front. And of course on the back with the treehouse looks so good. And then this is, Extremely cool. I love it when they do this. I haven't seen this since the Mad 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 World release from Criterion, but they've got the disc art that actually continues the artwork from behind it. So you've got his footprints going across there in the honey, which also goes underneath. And then, not only that, but the art goes around onto the front of this part of the digipack. And then you've got a booklet that slides out from the side which is a little tough to get out, but you can just push on that side and it comes right out. There it is. Very thick booklet. Looks like a Criterion box set booklet. Tons of imagery, tons of behind the scenes. Ooh, tons of uh, concept art. Very cool, very well designed. Love the orange and green colors on there. A24 puts out good stuff. I love that they're still putting out their own kind of their own boutique releases. Instead of selling out their IPs to another boutique label, they're just making their own and selling them on their website. And it's really cool. They're not too expensive. They're a little pricey, but uh, I think they're worth it, especially if you really like the movie. That is Marcel the Shell with shoes on. Really good movie. Check it out if you haven't. This next section is gonna be all about Oscar movies. Grace and I are watching all of the Oscar movies from last year in preparation for the Oscars last month. And uh, the ones that we really liked, we went ahead and purchased. And one of my favorites was called Tar. Had to hunt down the 4K version of this. This is a very hard 4K to find. There was only like a limited run in stores and then pff, they disappeared and you had to go to secondhand to pick them up. I found this on eBay for a really good deal. It was like $30, 32 maybe 34 I don't remember exactly, but it was cheaper than like the retail price and I couldn't believe it because usually these go for like 40 and 50 because these are very hard to find, especially with the slipcover. You can probably find one still without the slipcover, but the slipcover only were produced with the first run, I believe. I, I, I was looking for a while, I couldn't find it. Finally found one on eBay, very happy with it. It's a very nice slipcover. It's nice matte slipcover except for the silver touches there on the front and back. Really, really enjoyed this movie. Uh, don't know if I've talked about this on the channel, but I really did not like it the first time I watched it. And the second time I watched it, I fell in love with it. And it quickly jumped up my list from last year. And I think it ended up like around five in the top five, top six, something like that. I don't remember. I've already done a video about that with Grace. But yes, Tar is awesome. And if you didn't like it the first time, maybe try it again because it really worked on me the second time. The other Best Picture noms that I picked up I actually got this one from Best Buy. This is also 4K. It is the Fablemans. Found this one at Best Buy, luckily. Uh, I do have one Best Buy that still has physical media in my area. The other one that's closest to me actually got rid of all physical media and they have none. So I have to drive a little bit further. So when I drive out there, I like to at least come home with something. And uh, I was very happy to find this. And the next one that day, got these both the same day. This is the 4K version of the Fablemans, which was my favorite movie from last year, one of them. Uh, it's hard to actually pick a favorite, but uh, right up there at the top with Banshees was The Fablemans, and there you go. Love the slipcover on that. Love the artwork on that with the film strips. I don't know if that was just the regular poster. Probably was. I don't look at posters or trailers, so I'm usually in the dark about that kind of stuff until it comes out on physical media. But yes, this is The Fablemans. Everything's already been said about it. If you liked it, you probably already own it. And I picked it up last month in March, as well as same day I picked up Elvis. This was not one of my favorite movies from last year. Uh, definitely wasn't in my top 10 or anything, but I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. And this was actually on sale for only $15 that day at Best Buy. So it was a 4K, it was $15. I talked to Grace about it. I was like, ah, I don't know, do we really need this? Are we ever gonna watch this? She's like, just get it, it's only $15. We'll probably watch it at some point. So 
That is Elvis from Baz Luhrmann. Talk about nice slipcovers. Love the 4K slipcover on this. Of course, it's only a black spine. I, I don't like that all of the 4Ks have black spines because it's just adding to the shelves of black spines that I have back here. So not in love with that, but the rest of the slipcover looks great. And then also that same day, I picked up three things that day. It was actually a really good haul. I picked up the Magnificent 7 4K from Shout Select. This is my first Shout Select release. I don't think they put out a lot of movies that would interest me if I'm right about it. I think they put out a lot of horror movies, which I'm not a huge fan of. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments uh, more about Shout Select because this is my first experience with them. But I'm very impressed because this is a very nice, classy release. I love the custom portrait looking artwork on the front there and uh, love the burnt umber if you're a fan of bob ross spine on the side there looks really good back looks good everything looks good uh except for you know you got the ugly 4k banner at the top but you know i can live with that uh the discs on the inside look very nice as well very classy shout select logo looks really good so yeah this is my first shout select pickup i have seen this movie I actually really like this movie and uh, I was waiting. I don't even own a Blu-ray of this. So this is awesome that this is my first time picking this up. I haven't checked out the transfer yet, but I'm excited to look at that soon. I might watch this movie with my dad. I think he really likes this movie as well. And Grace has never seen it. And I'll probably show this to Judah pretty, pretty young because this is, uh, I think, I mean, it's got like gun stuff, but it's very like non-violent. If I remember right, I think you can show you maybe like seven, eight year old kids this movie and it seems pretty harmless, but let me know in the comments if I'm not remembering that right, but I think it's I think it's pretty harmless. But yeah, Magnificent Seven, a lot of history there. Goes back to Seven Samurai and goes forward to a bunch of remakes and other things that are based on this story, including Bugs Life, which is one of my favorite Pixar movies. Anyway, Magnificent Seven is a great addition to the collection. Don't know where I'm going to put this one yet. I don't know if I'm just going to put it back here in the orange section or if I'm going to try to put it over on the boutique shelf over there. Probably not because I only have one and it might look kind of weird by itself. So I'll probably keep it here until I pick up some more Shout Selects someday. Maybe. Next. So this one I also got from Best Buy, but I did not get it that day. We talked ourselves out of it because it did not have a slipcover and it was just a bare bones Disney release. And uh, it just doesn't look great. And I, I couldn't justify spending $25 or $20. It might have only been $20. I think it was $25. And then we went back to Best Buy another day and had dropped down to 20. And that's when I finally picked it up because it's one of my favorite movies of last year. And I think it is Grace's favorite movie from last year. It's Banshees of Inishirin. Wonderful, wonderful movie. One of our favorites, like I said, from last year. And uh, it's such a shame that all it got is this crappy little digital code release. Just flimsy case, single disc, no slip cover. No bonus features except for one tiny little featurette. Hopefully it gets a 4K release down the line. I know people are saying you should have held off and not buy the Blu-ray because it's going to get a 4K release. I don't have faith that it's going to get a 4K release because Disney sucks with physical media lately. So had to get this, but luckily I did find a seller on eBay who was selling this, which is a slipcover for Banshees of Inishirin that looks Really, really nice, and it's very sharp and glossy, very crisp and clear, and looks professionally done. So I picked that up on eBay. It wasn't too expensive, uh, and uh, I'm very happy that I picked it up because now it looks great on the shelf. I think this film is so great that it deserves the best presentation that I can give it. I'll put the link down in the description to the seller who made this for me. Custom slip covers have always been something that I've wanted to get into. Uh, I wanted to get into actually making them myself, but it's always been too overwhelming for me. But this is the first one that I have bought and I'm very happy with it. It looks great. I need to give that seller uh, positive feedback. I don't think I've done that yet, but he did a great job. So very happy to have that in the collection. Couple more to go over here. This next one is another Disney Movie Club exclusive offer that was sent to me. Uh, and I forgot to respond. So they just shipped it to me and charged me for it. And I hate when that happens because I don't know that I would have picked this up. I definitely wouldn't have paid this much for it, but that's the, the risk you run when you're a part of the Disney movie club. Anyway, we're not gonna be bitter about it. It's Strange World, uh, which I probably would have picked up eventually because I do like to have all of the Walt Disney Animation Studios films, 
but I wouldn't have rushed out to grab <laughs> this one and I wouldn't have paid full price for it because it's not the best Disney film. I like things about it and uh, I did enjoy it overall, but uh, it's not the best. Cool slipcover though. I like how it's all embossed here. And I love the old cereal-esque font. I think it looks really good. I love the kind of reddish pomegranate spine that it has. I, like I said before, I don't love the rounded corners, chopped off slip covers that they do for 4K. I think it looks dumb. It doesn't look great on the shelf. I don't know why they do that, but Strange World, if you haven't seen it, you probably don't care to see it at this point, but uh, it's okay. It's all right. It's not bad. <laughs> Next, we've got a couple other Disney films that are not new. I found these both at a secondhand store near me and they were both really good deals. Like I just said, I like to have at least a copy of every Walt Disney Animation Studio theatrical release. And uh, there's a few, there's just a few more that I don't have. And this was one of them. This is Lilo and Stitch. This is from the post-Renaissance era, the experimental era where they were trying new and different things. And I like this era more than most people. I think most of the people think this is like the, the worst era for Disney animation. I disagree. And this is one of the great ones. If you haven't seen Lilo and Stitch, or if you haven't watched it in a long time, go back because it really holds up it's a really interesting departure from what Disney usually does. That whole era is a lot of unusual, strange things. I rewatched it recently with the kids and I really enjoyed it and I wanted to have it on my shelf. And I think this was only like 12 bucks or something like that. So very happy to have that. It's also a two movie collection. It has the Lilo and Stitch 2 Stitch has a glitch movie on there, which uh, was just, I think, just setting up the TV show on the Disney Channel. That's not really the selling point. The main movie is the first movie. And then I also found for a good price with slipcover, which is hard to find these days, Sword and the Stone, which is not one of my favorite Disney movies. I didn't grow up with this one, but it is growing on me. Uh, each time I see it, I like it a little bit more. And I think this is a really, really nice slipcover. I love that it's red. Thank you, red. All the other slipcovers from Disney with these blue frames around them all have the exact same blue color. So it puts a big block of blue right there on my shelf. But this one will go up in the red section, which I desperately need more of because I don't need blues and I don't need blacks. That is the majority of the shelf already. So I'm always happy to get a new red or more rare color for a slipcover. Very happy to have that. And uh, this is just a really nice, release overall. Very happy to have that one. Those are some of the last two I need for the collection. I think there's only a couple more I need. I think I need Hercules and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Those are the only two Disney movies I need and I will have every single one from Snow White to Strange World. So got to pick up those two. Maybe I'll hit up eBay and see if I can get those soon and complete the collection. Maybe I'll do a video about that. Who knows? Any Disney fans watching? Probably not. Let me know in the comments if you're a Disney fan, because I definitely am. And then the last thing I picked up, also from that same secondhand store, I was very happy to find this. I was actually surprised to find this because I didn't even know about this until someone in the comments section mentioned it in one of the YouTube videos that I talked about, Jacques Tati. He mentioned this movie because it is actually based on a Jacques Tati script that he never made. It's an animated film called The Illusionist. And if you know Jacques Tati, you're familiar with him, you'll notice that that guy right there looks just like Jacques Tati. I, I'm excited to check this out. I can't wait to look at it. This is a film from 2010. It was nominated for Best Animated Feature in 2010. It looks like it's a much older skewing animated film. It doesn't look like it's specifically made for kids, which is fine because uh, I like animation and I don't think it's an, a medium that's just for kids. I absolutely think you can tell all kinds of stories in animation. And uh, I have started doing my research lately and I've been trying to track down more international animated films. I've gone through the entire list of best animated feature noms from the Oscars. And uh, this was one of them that I found on there. And uh, here it is, The Illusionist, Blu-ray and DVD. So I'm going to check that out as soon as I can, probably after I finish the last two Jacques Tati films that I need to watch in the box set. And then I'll go ahead and do this, throw this in there. Why not? Tati will be fresh on my mind. And it'd be very cool to see a script of his turned into an animated film and see if I can pick out uh, his sensibilities while watching it. So very excited to have that. Always excited to learn about more animated films that I wasn't familiar with and to add them to the collection. So that is The Illusionist. And I got that for only nine dollars brand new sealed you saw i just opened it that's a steal can't beat it and uh, i would say that's a pretty good haul for the month of march not bad not 
bad at all. I also picked up a few other things in the month of March that I haven't had a chance to talk about on the channel yet, including a big World Cinema Library Deluxe out of print box set that is beautiful and I can't wait to show you guys. I also got my hands on a few other out of print Criterion releases last month and I wanna do a video about that soon. I've got so many video ideas and there's not enough time in the day to get them all done, but I will do my best to get those out as soon as possible. Until then, I'll be talking to you guys in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of last month's pickups and let me know what you've been picking up lately and what you've been watching because I'm always interested in learning about new things. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, Keep collecting, and I'll see you very soon in the next video.